be brought out publicly. Yes. I mean, does any, do any of these people care? Probably not, but yeah, it's going to be, it, that's, you I know. agree. It's going to get messy and uh, people are going to be throwing, you know, sling tosses of, of shit against each other. But if it's a class action suit, I wonder how that works. If it gets individual and they have to go down the list of why each person was canceled or, you know, fired or whatever for their own behavior. Um, but, you know, what are your thoughts on if people are very sexual? I mean, there was talk about people uh, showing porn and, you know, being involved in some sort of porn without their consent. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because isn't the whole premise of like summer house and winter house to see them all hook up and be together. So now they're going to claim that they were forced to have sex with someone for the show. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? And I'm convinced that that is that Danielle Staub is part of this lawsuit because she smells a dollar and it's from Jersey. Danielle Staub back in her day, she made this porn, even though me, I think it was before, but it, that was going around. I think they brought it up on the show. I can't remember that was going around. So I, I just think that refers to that. But yeah, I mean, look, it's going to get, you know, and then they also said, I think another part of it was, and this is what I'd be interested in. I would love to see these emails and texts, like where they say they were told by NBC Bravo producers, you're not happy. You, oh, you, you were mistreated. If you breathe a word of this, you're done. That Because that is alleged, not in so many, in so many words, I'm making it a little more dramatic, but I would love to see where like an NBC Andy um, producer say, keep your mouth shut. I don't care what you saw. That that could be, that's big, I think, if so, that's but, real. But don't you think that people that get involved in this know that they have to act out to keep their fame, to keep their job and to keep their relevancy? So I, as you you know, um, I was on the short list to be on Housewives of New York. They called me out of the blue. Um, <clears throat> I didn't even have an agent at the time. And they called an agent that had worked with me years before. He pitched it to me and said, there's only five people in the short line, in the short list. And they have now made you one of them. They had me do some Zoom calls, a, a video, stuff like that. Um, and to be honest with you, not to toot my own horn, but just in, in terms of, Housewives of New York. I am more of a New Yorker than any of the women that they've really had on the show. I was in, you know, I went to private school in New York. I grew up in New York. I uh, lost my fiance in September 11th. I owned two businesses, two, uh, you know, clothing store businesses in New York and was like a struggling New Yorker trying to make my life there. Then I had been in the Tiger Woods scandal and my name was all over the papers, even though it was all over the papers for being a New Yorker during September 11th. Like of anyone you're going to get that's going to give you headlines, I was a, somebody they should have, it would have been correct to cast me, right? But I will tell you that, the, so they cast Leah instead of me. What was interesting is that with my personality and with me, like I will, I believe in the underdog. I will go after anyone. I will stay on my ground, but I'm not going to be mean to people out of nowhere just to get ratings. Um, I am, I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to say what's right, but there is no shot that someone's going to say to me, all right, we're going to fabricate an argument, get involved, be the bully. That would never work with me. I would be like, go fuck yourself. And I will expose you because that's not how it works. And that's not going to work for me. So I feel like that's probably why I didn't get picked. I was just going to say, sweetie, this is why you didn't get picked. Also, you got me a little queasy with the Ramona talk. Now you have completely made me lose my lunch with the mention of Leah McSweeney. Completely. Horrible right. person. Um, and, you know, this isn't to be edited out. She just is horrible. So I, I would why have gone you with that? you. You know what it is? It's called reality TV. So whether you're more of a New Yorker than her, by the way, because you're such a New Yorker is the reason I fixed you up with Bodito, two New yes, Yorkers. That's right. But we're still looking, guys. We're still looking for Rachel over here. But we had well, a great no, night. Wait, at I just will oh. say, I loved Bodito. We I know great, you did. I we know had a did. great interview on my podcast. We had a great date at, at Rayo's. I thought he was super sexy the way he carries himself. The fact that he took off his jacket and he was packing. Oh, I mean, he had I a, love a, gun. a gun. I love a gun. Uh, like connected to his belt buckle. It was super hot. The respect he commands from all the people in the room, wherever he goes. 
Um, I love that he knows the wise guys and the police department. I mean, the guy is just completely connected and he treated me really well. Listen, I live in Florida now. He lives in New York. We still keep in touch, but I don't know that it was a love connection. But if I lived in New York, I would definitely, you know, he he was a great guy. He was a great guy. So. I mean, I, I, I love Bo Deedle. Um, To quickly answer a question before we move on, why don't I like Leah? And I've talked about this on my show before. I like authentic people. So if your story is that you were the poor girl, Leah, growing up and you saw all the girls with the Chloe bags and the Louis bags and you wanted to be Tinsley, you wanted that. And that's, that's a story. That's okay. I mean, you should be happy with what you have, but if you were always the one and you know, you, you know, you felt like, look at all these girls, they're just so nice. And my, my clothes are like hand-me-downs and I'm embarrassed and I wish I had money. I'm okay with that story. When you get on the housewives, just admit that, just say that you, when you act then that you're downtown and you're the cool downtown street vibe chick, but you would cut off your arm, have it bleed from the socket to be dining at, you know, the Mark Hotel and Cafe Carlisle every night. And you want that life so bad. And you're pretending like, oh, I would never want that. It's called inauthenticity. And then I have no time for you. And yeah. Leah's just that in a nutshell. So right. that's right. one major reason why I'm not a fan. Got like so you identity per- crisis. You would have preferred if I had got cast that year. Well, I would have preferred that you were cast for a lot of reasons. Cause I mean, eventually they'd be like, what's your fucking storyline? And you would say, it's my gay BFF, David. And then I would, I mean, it all comes back to me, sweetheart, you know, and you could have brought Harry on. We could have had a night at the Regency. So, I mean, I have my own ulterior motives, but yes, I do think you or, you know, the person that is basically like has no personality sleeping right now during the middle of the day would be better than Leah. But yes, you specifically would have been much better. Correct. Right. Okay. They made a mistake. Um, all right. So do you think that people from the original Housewives of New York will be joining this lawsuit? Yeah, like I think that, look, I mean, and let me just say, because people are saying, why is, but you even asked, why is Bethany doing this? I think that I really do think, look, she wants money, right? Like she could get money out of this. But I do think that this, like she really doesn't want to go back. That really is true. She doesn't need the money. So if your legacy, I mean, look, Bethany has an ego. It's all about Bethany. So if your legacy is that you changed the face of reality TV and the contracts and the treatment. And that was you. Oh, I think it's more than that, David. I think there's something. Yeah. I think there's something up her sleeve. She's either going to be in the works to start her own network. Um, It's bigger than that. There is an end game for her for sure. And she's going to say that it was, you know, it's something that was born out of these thoughts of how to do the right thing. But I can see, you know, it didn't work for her to have her talk show. She's dabbled in all these different businesses and different reality shows and that, that, that. I think that her next step is going to be that she's an either an agent for reality stars, which, you know, could, could fall under her, her umbrella of what she's good at, or it could be that she 